Okay, in this video we're going to look at the following theorem whose corollaries are so important we're going to state them before we even look at the proof of the theorem. And the theorem says the following. So if we let P be a prime and D is a natural number that divides P minus 1, then there are, there are exactly phi of D incongruent integers of order D modulo P. Okay, great. Now the immediate corollary to this is the following. There are exactly phi of p minus 1 incongruent integers of order p minus 1 modulo p. But the really important thing here is if you have an integer modulo p minus 1, or sorry, uh, of order p minus 1 modulo p, it is a primitive root modulo p. So in other words, there is a primitive root modulo p for modulo every prime. Okay, good. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, so we know for every prime there's a primitive root, we can go about uh, proving this theorem. So uh, let's see how the proof goes. So the first thing that we need, need to do is consider a certain function, and that function is this. So we'll call it f of d. Uh, and that's going to give us the following. So that's going to give you the, the number of elements in the following set. So all integers between 1 and p minus 1, where the order uh, modulo p of that integer equals d. Okay, great. And um, we know that since... The order uh, modulo p of m must divide um, p minus 1. We have uh, the following claim. The following claim is uh, uh, somewhat obvious, and that is the sum over all divisors of p minus 1 of this f of d equals p minus 1. Okay, great. And now, maybe the thing to notice here is that this is just um, two different ways of counting all of the numbers between um, 1 and p minus 1. So, uh, we can count them 1 up to p minus 1, or we can count them in these sets. But um, every number between 1 and p minus 1 will be a divisor of p minus 1. So every number is in one of these sets, and thus it's part of this function. Okay, great. Now the other thing that we notice is by a previous theorem, we have uh, the sum over all divisors of p minus 1 of phi of d, where that's Euler's phi function, is equal to p minus 1. So we proved a more general version of that. So notice we have this sum is equal to this sum, which is almost what we want. What we want is f of d equals phi of d, so we're not quite there. Um, I'll clean up the proof and then we'll work towards that fact. Okay, so we left off at this fact. We have the sum uh, over all divisors of p minus 1 of this function f of d, where we'll recall that's the number of um, elements of order d or of integer of order d, um, is equal to the sum uh, over the Euler phi function where we take the same range. And so uh, the next thing that we want to do is the following. Um, so we want to show that f of d has got to be less than or equal to phi of d. Great, so uh, clearly what we really want to show is that they are equal, but we're going to show that uh, we have this inequality and that will prove equality. Okay, so maybe the first thing to notice is if f of d equals zero, we are done. So what we'll do is assume that f of d is bigger than zero. Great, so we're done because we know phi of d um, is a positive number, so zero will obviously be less than that. Um, and so the next thing that we want to do is that since f of d is positive, we can find an element of order d. And in fact, we can find all of the elements of order d. Um, so then there is an element 
A um, of order D. Good. And now we want to uh, consider the following. So we'll consider um, A, A squared, all the way up to A to the D minus 1. Good. And we know that each of these... is an incongruent solution of x to the d minus 1 is congruent to 0 mod p. So uh, these are clearly all solutions to this given the fact that a is of order d but then we know that they're incongruent solutions. Well, if we assume that two of these are congruent to each other, we will get a contradiction on the order of D using uh, the division algorithm. It's a pretty simple um, uh, claim. Okay, good. So we know all these are solutions of this polynomial uh, congruence. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll start from there. Okay, so let's see where we left off. We let a be of order d, and then a, a squared to a to the d minus 1 are all of the solutions to x to the d minus 1. So they are clearly solutions to the x to the d minus 1, but then by a previous result, we know x to the d minus 1 has exactly d solutions, so that makes them all of the solutions to x to the d uh, minus 1. Oh, and I should say including um, maybe one into this. Um, okay, great. And so another thing to notice is that if you have an element of order D, it will be a solution to this. So in other words, all integers of order D will be on this list. Good. And then the ones that are of order D here, we can calculate by the following. So we know that the order of a to the k will be equal to the order of a over the GCD of um, k with, um, let's see, with the order of a. Great. But we know the order of a is d, so this is d over the GCD of k with d. But if we want this to be equal to D, so our goal is when is this equal to D? And it's equal to D exactly when the GCD of K and D um, equals 1. And so how many choices of K do you have? You have exactly um, phi of D choices of K. So that means there are phi of D integers of order d. So let's see what we have. That tells us that we have two cases. So remember we started off with the case that phi of d equals 0 or phi of d equals f of d because remember f of d counted the number of integers of order d so we have these two cases but notice this this one's impossible because if phi of d is ever zero then this sum does not hold so we can get rid of this and we're left with this being the only possibility um, and that finishes the proof